you basically take your finger and drag it to the left or drag it to the right and it'll calculate for you the frame rate and the final length of the video. My name is Karone Sharastani. I am the founder of Corona Modern Media and I'm also the social media manager for Marin Open Studios. Today's training is about art time lapses and how that kind of content works in your favor as far as marketing and using video more as a form of sharing your process, whatever type of art you make, whatever your discipline. Some of this is going to be a review of things that we've already learned in previous sessions because it does have to do with a type of content that I've talked about before. Uh, so bear with me in those moments just to so make sure everybody's caught up. Also, uh, full disclosure, I am an Android person, meaning that my smartphone is on Android. I do work with Apple devices. Right now we are on my Apple desktop computer. The app screenshots that I'll be showing you today is from a specific app that I use on my Android phone and I recently discovered that it's not available on iPhone and so I will be covering iPhone as well just so I make sure we're all on the same page and we're also going to cover editing or post-production of time lapses today so that everybody can understand how you can shorten or lengthen or in any way manipulate or brand these little snippets of video content for a better usage and call to action uh, on your different marketing platforms, social media, your website, etc. So time-lapse videos, also known as hyperlapse videos, are essentially a type of video that is created from still shots or still photos. And that technically is how all video is made, is it's a series of photos strung together at either a slower or faster frequency or what's called frame rate. And so a time-lapse video is lapsing time, meaning that some of the coolest time-lapse videos we've all seen, and I can pull some up later when we're in Q&A, have been like when you see a flower growing, right? Or you see a carcass of a fox, like, disintegrating and dying into a forest and you're just like wow that flower took days weeks however long to bloom that carcass took days weeks months to disintegrate and and you know turn into compost and so time lapse videos are about taking a photo every number of seconds or minutes or hours over a long period of time to show the progress of time and growth of a specific uh, process. And so when it comes to our art marketing, this is a very powerful tool, especially if you spend a good amount of time making an individual piece of art. And I've already seen, I know some of you already put questions into the chat about like specifics on this, and that's exactly why we are doing this training today, is once you get a hang of it, and once you really, understand how to do it on a basic level, it does become a very regular ritualistic part of your artistic process if you want it to be. And then you can have a time lapse for everything that you've done. And then later on in the game, you can have a time lapse of all of the art you've done in 2020. Think of people wanting to see your process, not for just an individual piece, but for a season, for a year, for a long period of mourning, for a long period of inspiration, a lot of different paintings, for instance. I also like to use time-lapse because I work in video and video marketing and I'm a little more techie. So some of this does involve math and some of this does involve really techie specific stuff, especially when you have an app like what I'll be showing you today. So make sure that you play around with the basic version if you're on iPhone um, just to kind of see how it works and then once you warm up to the idea of doing a dedicated time lapse with all the information we have today 
uh, then you'll, you know, kind of warm up to that. But I personally am not a big math person and it took me a while to understand time lapses and how they work and the best way to do them. We will cover suggested smartphone applications, tripods and lighting, calculating frame rate, how to save something as a video, and then editing with InShot. Suggested smartphone applications are definitely going to overlap a little bit in that we've done a number of trainings so far with smartphone stuff. TikTok, InShot, Viva Video Pro, PicPack, and Boomerang. Our most recent training, which was about smartphone videos, we mostly talked about InShot and we talked a little bit about Viva Video. Um, and so today we're talking more about PicPack, but again, when you're on iPhone, it's really just your time-lapse function that's built into your camera. That's the best way to do it. And then download the InShot app that you're seeing right here, the one in red with the little white icon for a camera frame on the inside. And you can take what you filmed and you can put that through the InShot app to improve it or brand it or make it better. These are the ones that I use the most. TikTok we've talked about in previous ones. It's the one the kids are all using. You can very easily put music onto any video as well as work in the vertical up and down format, which is different than the horizontal format. And I have done time lapses and put them on TikTok. So that's another thing you can think about is you make a time-lapse, just basic time-lapse function on your iPhone, and then put it into one of these other programs. The exception is Boomerang, which I just put it up here again because it's one of my faves and want you to see my top five. But Boomerang is not something that edits or adds music to a video or anything. It creates its own little compact videos that loop into each other um, that are only like five seconds, six seconds long. So that's its own separate thing. But these are the apps. As far as tripods and lighting, we did cover this. And yes, this, if this looks very similar to what we did last week, it's pretty much the same breakdown of gear. But when you think of tripods and lighting for time-lapse, you really want con what's called continuity. Continuity means that even though that flower grew for a number of hours, even though that carcass of a fox decomposed for a number of days, the camera didn't move. If it did move, it moved very subtly and slowly over a long period of time, and that takes a totally different amount of gear. But essentially, the reason why it's enchanting to see a flower bloom, because the human eye would not be able to see that flower bloom in that short period of time. So the fact that you're able to see that in any video depiction is really, I think, bewitching. But part of that is that the camera doesn't move. So this first tripod we see here that has a little remote, has three legs, hence tripod. That's the most stable thing you can do if you're really paranoid about it. Or let's say you can see on the center of the tripod, this has little telescoping parts to it. That uh, is something where you will be able to make it really tall, but then that makes it top heavy and that means it could topple over, like someone could knock it over or the wind could knock it over and you're like, mom, my $800 phone. So one thing you can do, this is traditional video talk, is put a sandbag on the bottom of the tripod and keep it from falling over. If not a sandbag, an encyclopedia, if not an encyclopedia, a backpack, like something heavy that will make it more bottom centered and will keep it still. Once in a while, with any of these tripods that you're seeing here, or this is a tripod, this is a phone holder with an extendable bendable arm, this is a gorilla pod with little circular novels on it that can attach to and grab things like a ceiling or a wall or a door. With all of these, there's a chance you can hit it or your spouse could hit it or a bird could hit it if you're on plein air. So just be okay with that and know that you want to film a time lapse and try to have it the camera view to be as stable as possible. So if you're for instance going to film something for several hours and I didn't put it on here but you all know it, you want your power cord if possible to connect to an external battery, right? You know those little portable phone batteries that you can plug your phone into when you're going to be on a plane or you know long trip or something. Have one of those 
attached to the phone when you set it up on one of these tripods so that if the function of taking a time lapse starts to drain your battery, that it doesn't die. Have I had time lapses die because I forgot to plug in the battery? So many times. Have I knocked over a tripod during a time lapse and messed up? Yes. Have I totally hit it with my head and changed perspective and didn't remember how I had before? Yes. But these are all things that ideally the camera doesn't move. When it comes to lighting, these are more about lighting the painting or lighting the subject more than you being lit or the room being lit. Like you don't really have to go big. So these are small LED options that aren't going to burn your house down if you leave them on all night by accident. And to the right is, this is a lavalier from last week, but imagine if you do a time lapse and it takes however many hours or days or months and you put them all the videos together and you save it and you're ready to put it on YouTube and you're thinking like, I'd really like to talk about the process of making this. Like, I actually didn't like this painting the whole time that I did it. And I kind of want to talk about how I have a love-hate relationship with the concept. Then you can put that little mic that's called a lavalier and would go on your lapel on your shirt and record yourself into your phone in an audio program to the tone or to the pace of your time lapse and just be like when I painted this video or when I painted this camera or when I made this statue or when I blew this glass piece like I really wanted to break it or I really you know it's just get into the emotion of it and put your words over it you can of course just put music over a time lapse or you can leave it silent but that would be a reason why I would have the microphone here for you. As far as calculating your frame rate, PickPack. When you download PickPack, which is free, and you open the, this is what the app button is, and you open it, and it has this first opening video that's like 40 seconds long or something, that's just a promo video. So in the bottom corner of this first, you know, the second screenshot in the middle, you'll see a little forward arrow. You just press that to go forward. When you get into PickPack, you have a chance to turn video into photos, take photos, or access local photos. And so I typically just go straight to take photos. And that means start and commence making your time lapse, like getting right into the settings of it. And so this is recognizing the fact that it's not a video yet. You're just telling this app to take a certain number of photos at a certain frequency. And then later you're gonna string them all together at whatever speed and length you want them to be. and export them as a finished video. And so this is three more screenshots but we're horizontal now. So starting at the top. So you're filming horizontally. And this is my um, watercolor pack of artist pencils. At the top, you'll see there's the very first button says auto. And on the second screen or shot, you'll see it's manual. So you can toggle between auto and manual. What does that mean? Auto on a time lapse means you press start, meaning this little play button right here. And it'll just take images every 10 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever you want, over whatever period of time until you tell it to stop on its own, robotically. Manually is more of those videos you've seen like Gumby. That's stop motion. That is where Gumby was going like this and they took a picture and then someone closed his fist and they took a picture and then someone changed his face so he's angry and they took a picture and then he, and they speed it up and they put it together. So that's a completely different form of video, but essentially you're taking a photo and then changing something to taking a photo. It's exhausting to do. Stop motion is not fun because <laughs> time lapse just does its own thing, but that's what manual is in the time lapse world. By default, this program has you at 1920 by 1080. It says 108 dot dot, but you see right here on the third slide or the third part of the screenshots that it's 1920 by 1080 and then a bunch of other ratios. This basically is telling the program at what sharpness and HD resolution do you want your photos to be taken in? And so I typically leave it on 1920, 1080 because why wouldn't I want my art images that I'm using for this time lapse to be as sharp as possible? Below size, which is what we were just looking at 1920 by 1080 is intervals. So this is the crucial thing when you're working with a time lapse app 
is telling the app how often you want it to take a photo during the process. If you do something like six seconds or two seconds, that's pretty frequent. It's too frequent for any long project. It's just too many frames. You might as well be shooting a video almost at that point. So I opened it up here to show you that, and it looks like I did, yeah, two different screenshots, but um, <laughs> these are essentially the same thing. Sorry about that. But you can see that you have an option for six seconds, eight seconds, 10 seconds used to be my go-to for art art pieces that take anywhere from four to 10 hours. Now that I've recognized how many frames that is for a 10 hour project, I do 30 seconds. So it takes a picture a minute. If I know I'm gonna be creating this art for at least, like finished art, because these are my one day challenge projects I'm doing right now, my finished art maximum would be 10 hours. So if you're someone who's doing a project for days or months or years, then maybe you should do it every minute or every two minutes or every five minutes because you might have, you know, hundreds of hours, who knows, right, of artistic stuff logged into this one project. And so you want to think ahead to, okay, roughly what is the ballpark maximum time I would spend on this art project? And then you would want more time to be allotted between each click. Why? Because that's a lot of data and content and storage to be used up on your phone. You're taking 1920 by 1080 HD photos every two seconds, every eight seconds, every 10 seconds for days or months or years. That's a lot of content. It will jam up your phone, use up your storage, your apps will stop working properly as we covered in last week's session. So just keep that in mind. The shorter period of time that you, are, that you are going to need to complete your artistic project, then you can have 10 seconds, let's say. But if you're gonna be doing something for a, like a commission for days, weeks, months, consider 30 seconds or a minute. Yes, it's true. You might have a session where you only painted for 30 minutes and you only have 30 frames, but those can all be strung together in the editing process that we'll cover later in today's training. Speaking of sharp HD images that you want captured, this bottom part, you can see on the upper right corner, you have autofocus disabled or autofocus enabled. You want your autofocus auto disabled potentially in this project so that if you know for a fact that that phone is going to be about that distance from that canvas the whole time that you're doing the time lapse, you don't want the camera or the app itself to refocus on your shoulder when you move into the shot or to refocus on the back of your hand when you're touching the project because all of a sudden the continuity is messed up. You go from a really sharp flower blooming and then all of a sudden it's really weird and blurry and then it's blooming and it's so sharp and then all of a sudden it's kind of blurry. Think of that. Continuity is you don't want people to even know what they're watching. You just want them to like fall into it. And by keeping that autofocus disabled, you allow your art piece to be in focus pretty much the whole time and not actually have your human body or your paintbrush or your oil or whatever, your water bucket to potentially come into the frame, distract the camera and make it move or change your focus for your content. It's such a bummer when that happens. I get so, I used to get so bummed <laughs> before I understood this better. Making your time lapse, you'll get to the selection of what images you actually want in there. So let's say that, it, that your cat walked into the shot and sat there for eight minutes in front of your canvas or in front of your sculpture. Maybe that's like the most adorable thing and you're like, oh my gosh, how great. I'm gonna be social media famous because my cat just walked into my video. Awesome. However, for continuity on a time lapse, it's like a cat was there, a cat's not there. And then everything else is, and it's, it's weird and sketchy. So sometimes it's better just to completely remove a frame. So you can see how this, in the first one, it's all of your frames. 
And in the next one, it says pick all pictures, every second picture, every third picture. So you could pick all pictures and then you would, with your finger, because we're on a smartphone, tap which ones you want and don't want and it'll deselect. And you could just completely remove the somewhat distracting ones. Or so let's say you spilled coffee on your palate. Like, fun maybe no embarrassing like <laughs> so think of different ways that you can uh you know just go with the flow when you're filming the time lapse knowing that you can take out certain individual stills like i'm not saying you're filming yourself but let's say you accidentally pick your nose and it's in the shot go ahead and take that out no reason to have that just like flash in front of somebody and they were like did i just see that was that her picking her nose you can also reverse the order in this app and other apps. So that's kind of cool. Imagine having your painting of like a grassy knoll and all of a sudden it just goes back to an empty canvas. There are just different ways that you can use time lapse to kind of show this growth and evolution in different ways. Here's where the math is. This is where I was just like, oh, I don't want to think about it. I kind of just want to take a time lapse and like hope for the best. But when you do work on a multiple day or multiple hour project or multiple months, you would potentially in the final project bring down the exported length of, of the video. And so this first one, if the duration of each image is a tenth of a second, one over 10, a tenth of a second, the video is going to be about eight seconds. PicPack is saying about eight seconds because it's going to put its branding and logo on the end, which you just pull it into InShot and cut off their branding, and that's why it's free. But about eight seconds or seven seconds is a good social media friendly video. And I did make a video of this series that we're showing right here with these screenshots, I actually made a little time lapse to show you guys what this looks like in what this actual screenshot. So you'll see what the seven second video looks like. Sometimes I feel like seven seconds is a little short. For me, the magical length is between 13 and 15 seconds. So this one is if the duration of each picture is a fifth of a second, then the video is about 13 seconds long. So this is just the kind of stuff that you're where your brain can kind of go to mush if you're not a math person. Because if you look past these white squares, and it's not highlighted anymore, but this is a very short time lapse. It's only 61 frames. So if you're working with something where it's like thousands of frames, just know that this toggle, and I think it's kind of cute, there's a turtle on the left, which means you want it to go slower, and there's a rabbit on the right, meaning you want the video to go faster, like tortoise and the hare. But you basically take your finger and drag it to the left or drag it to the right, and it'll calculate for you the frame rate and the final length of the video. Very helpful, big part of what I use this particular app for is that manipulation. And here we're getting into how to save as a video in this particular app. When you choose your frames or your images that you're going to use for your time lapse, this does have an option for you to do a title, right? Some sort of text effect, which I don't usually do. The video size, this second part of it. So when you tap that with your finger, your drop down menu, this is talking about how HD can we get? So if you remember from those of you who attended last week, 1080 is what you want, 1080 HD. And it's telling you fast, okay for sharing, pro, best quality. This is why sometimes when some of you have said you share a video and it's blurry which the person on the other end, that's maybe because it's in 360 or 480 compressed format to work faster on the internet when your smartphone is sending it to somebody. Whereas 1080 HD is someone can watch this on their bigger laptop or desktop and everything will stay sharp. So I always err on 1080. You would then click create video and then making my awesome video, specifically with PicPack, it can take a long time if you have a lot of frames for this to generate a video for you. So you have to keep it open until it says 100% and it shows you the next screen. So keep that in mind with any of this type of more sophisticated time-lapse stuff, you gotta let it stay open until it's done processing. That's the whole point of going through all these steps. For my iPhone people, 
this is what it looks like. You're in your camera, you're toggling left and right with your finger between photo, video, slow-mo, time-lapse. It's in there somewhere. It's built in. It's part of your default. Sometimes it's called hyperlapse, but looking for the lapse, right? And when you're looking for apps for iPhone, that would be somewhat like what we've worked with the pick-pack training part of it today. Look for something with the word lapse, like lapse it is one of the iPhone available apps that you can use. Showing you here what it looks like when you're on your phone and it's in the photo part of it and you're, you know, holding down on the photo and moving left or right. So it's showing you with a little, you know, push and move. And then on time lapse, you do have in the newer iPhone models the capability of manipulating and seeing that frame rate, that frequency. Here it allows you to choose between whether you want something to be the speed that you film the time lapse or you want it to be half the speed. So you want it to be a shorter video, you want it to be longer or you want it to be double the speed. Your time lapse is great, but it's way too long. That's where you would choose these different options with an iPhone. And yeah, so when you go at 0.5 or two times, that's where you would uh, play with the time a little bit. Beyond the native time lapse function on iPhone, this is an image from in shot, which we covered last week. So this is my seven second video. And when you want your time lapse to be shorter or longer outside of what we just saw for iPhone, um, so this works for iPhone or Android, you pull that video, that time lapse you took into the InShot app. And here you can see at the bottom, and I can always make these bigger, speed. And when you tap speed, you can see it has its own little toggle from left to right where you hold your finger down on the little circle and you bring it to the left and it'll make your video slower and you bring it to the right, it'll make your video faster. And that means longer or shorter in length. So here's the video. It's only nine seconds. Oh, and there's the pick pack logo at the end. So I'll do it one more time. So basically I have my pencil case. I open the pencil case. This is me holding with one hand, by the way. Other hand, taking out pencils and then I put them all back in. And so what you would do is bring that into InShot and you would just take off that pick pack logo at the end. Let's watch it one more time. Talk them all out, put them back in. Jill says, how does this work if it takes you weeks to do your painting and can you take still photos and make them into a time lapse? So Jill, basically any photos put together in a sequence can be a time lapse. The idea of a time lapse is that it is a continuity of subject. It is the same thing over and over again as it's changing. So that's the major distinction. As far as how does it work if it takes you weeks to do a painting, you film a little bit, save it on your phone, film a little bit, save it on your phone, film a little bit, save it on your phone. Then you put all of them in the InShot app that we just looked at and save it as one big file. And if after so many weeks, you're like, that's a lot of time lapse, then you do what we just trained on speed. You make all of them faster. You make all of them shorter so that the ultimate length of your final project is shorter. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you put the phone in a vertical or horizontal view for videos? The PicPack app requires horizontal. That's not to say you can't put it into InShot and flip. That's one of the cooler things about InShot as a video editing app on your smartphone is that if you film something accidentally horizontally or vertically and you want to change that or crop it or make it zoom in or zoom out or whatever, that that's one of the better apps for that. But I genuinely, generally do horizontal time lapses because that's what PicPack defaults in. 
can you convert an old camera tripod to a smartphone, Jill? What I would look at is, um, and I'll have to get back to the terminology, I think of your email, but if you were to look on Amazon, you're looking for a smartphone holder that attaches to a camera screw-in system. So when you have a DSLR like Sony or Canon, they have a specific strip of, you know, screws that can be put into a, a camera tripod. So you just need something that they know they're on Amazon. It's a camera screw adapter. And the, oh, yep, yeah, look, somebody's got one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I can find it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm sure you can find it. And then, so if you paint for months, how do you avoid moving the canvas? or your distance from it. Sometimes you just, the canvas is gonna move or you're gonna be in a different outfit or you started in fall and the light was really dark and you ended up in summer, it took so long and now the light's really bright in that part of your house. Just know that the longer period of time that you would think that that would make a difference, the more that that's a blip in time. Like for that one day it was dark or for that one day you were wearing that neon color that you didn't like or for that one day it was like a little out of focus. But if you're doing several days of painting, then it's just gonna be like 15 second video, we're talking moments. And so those are moments in time, that evolution of time is what becomes so uh, exciting for these types of videos for people when they wanna learn about your process. Video size 1920 by 1080. Someone says 60 frames or not with 60 frames. Um, uh, 30 frames is fine. Doesn't need to be 60 frames. And 60 frames is more of a slow motion frame rate. I tried two times and it zoomed into the photo. So Kathleen, email me about that. Um, what are good camera positions and angles for placement of camera when showing painting being painted? Good one, Laura. Sorry, I didn't cover this. We kind of covered this last week. If it's a big painting or a big sculpture and you don't want to cut off half the canvas or cut off the, the feet of the goddess that you're sculpting, etc., you would take your camera farther away in the corner or on a bookshelf or something behind you and just remember or put some tape that that's where you put it every time if it's something that takes several days. I do a lot of like six inch by six inch. I don't have any in reachable distance, but I have a lot of six by six or eight by 10 art that I'm doing right now. That's the only way I've been able to do one canvas a day for 30 days. And so I have, a, and they're in the tripods we just saw, I have the little bendable arm one and I actually attach it to the easel. So the art's right here. And I attach the little clip to the easel and the arm comes and my phone is basically like right next to my shoulder or a little bit above, like basically eye level. Eye level next to you or eye level behind you. Yes, you're gonna hit it with your head. <laughs> yes, you're gonna hit it with your brush. You know, different things are gonna come up that you'll get used to it. Um, but your viewpoint, that's what you want. If it's something small, your viewpoint, because the closer it is to the canvas, the more details you're gonna get. If it's a big canvas or a big art project or a mural, like a you know street mural or something, that should be far away. So you can get the full scope of it. Suppose you work in two different places on the sculpture, one with clay and another in the finishing. How does that work with time-lapse? So uh, you would just recognize that in your story that you're telling of this piece of art, it all started in my basement, like it, or it all started in my attic. But then I finished it at ICB, or I finished it at this really cool construction site that I found. It's unfortunately, you know, it, it won't have the same continuity of an art project that I complete in one day. <laughs> but when you change locations, just recognize that you control the speed and the number of frames that you're capturing for time lapses. So really that continuity will still be there in like the pace of the telling of the story. Like everything's gonna be in HD, everything's gonna be 30 seconds apart, or you distinguish that. Everything's gonna be out of, you know, it's disabled autofocus, whatnot. So if you think about it, those elements, the focus of it, the sharpness of it, 
and the frequency of the frames, how fast it goes by, that'll all be the same. So just know that that'll, it's still a very interesting story. It's just, like I said, that flower growing, it's not like all of a sudden the flower's in a pot on your porch and no longer in the forest. Like it looks cooler when it's just coming out of the ground, doing its thing and the camera that's capturing it doesn't move. What's a good angle position, et cetera, if you are working on a piece that is flat on a table? So, Laura, you're talking about like this. Where are you, Laura? I'm like, where is Laura? Oh, there you are. <laughs> I'm like looking in your eyes. So, like this, right? Um, two different ways. One is the traditional, like, photographer's way is uh, geometric, right? You have one thing like this, like a photo stand, which has like tripod legs. And then you, it has its own little arm thing. And then you have like a bar or what's called a crossbar. So when you see these like beautiful kitchen videos where like all you see is her marble counter <laughs> and her well manicured hands and the bowl comes out and it's a salad and then it comes out and it's a soup and it's so well lit and it's beautiful. Yeah, that's how those are done is something's up, up and down like this and then something's like this, holding it out, and then your camera or your phone with the smartphone clip or whatever is dangling, and then you wanna have sandbags or encyclopedias on the bottom of the thing uh, to keep it from toppling over. What I use is from that first, or uh, the gear slide that we covered today, it's a clip on one end and a clip on the other end and a bendable arm, and it looks like it's like, woo, bendable, but it's like a firm, usually like, you know, take some arm strength to bend it so it's it might like if you joggle the table that you're on it's going to sway a little bit kind of like a tree but it's not going to topple over the way that you got something like this something like this and someone tips it over and it's all just going to fall down it's like when this thing's like bendable you hit it and it goes and then it just goes back to you know and when i hit my tripod i'm like ah i hit the i usually just hold the phone for a second because I know I just jostled it, let it slow down, and then get back to work. So those are two different ways you could do it. Um, the one with the stand and like the crossbar, the traditional, that is where you can go really far away up above you. So if you're doing a big table project, it needs to be far away, just like it would in a mural, but farther up. And then you can take some really cool like fashion influencer photos as well, because that's how all the fashion influencers like stay looking young. They've got like a camera really far away above them. They're like, hello, I'm in the sand, I'm in the flower fields. Okay, I digress. It's been a long week. Thank you guys so much for attending today's training. I hope that you are inspired to play with time lapses and hyperlapses on your smartphones. Merci, gracias. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. I wish you all like delicious meals and healthy, fun times with your family. Bye.